Here's something I wanted to help out my uh, my listeners. I'm looking up meteorite on Wikipedia, and a few missing things in there are apparent to me. I'll go ahead and read the beginning of it, that way people can understand what's going on here. A meteorite is a solid piece of debris from a source, such as an asteroid or a comet, which originates in outer space and survives its impact with the Earth's surface. It is called a meteoroid before its impact. A meteorite's size can range from small to extremely large. When a meteoroid enters the atmosphere, friction, pressure, and chemical interactions with the atmospheric gases cause it to heat up and radiate the energy, thus forming a fireball, also known as a meteor or shooting falling star. A boloid is either an extraterrestrial body that collides with the Earth or an exceptionally bright fireball-like meteor regardless of whether it ultimately impacts the surface. And I scrolled down a little bit and I said, well, how exactly do iron, nickel alloys form in outer space where there's no pressure, there's no heat, and there's nothing to keep the object coherent? As it turns out, they don't have a description for, or an explanation for how exactly iron and nickel melts to form alloys in outer space. It's not covered at all. All they say is it's a solid piece of debris from a source, such as an asteroid or a comet. Now, I think they failed to realize that the asteroid or the comet can be the meteorite, so still, where did the asteroid and comet come from? They're completely skipping over it. And... Here, I'll explain it to you. I drew a little diagram here. It's not high artist uh, quality, but I did my best. You have an object, such as the Earth, and you have your core, you have your outer core, you have your mantle, and you have your outer mantle, and you have your crust. And depending on... Okay, you also have an impactor. And depending on how much the impactor impacts this main object will determine what kind of meteorite is formed. So you have your iron and nickel alloys, I misspelled nickel right there, in the center. You have your iron and stony meteorites, which are the outer core. And then you have your stony and your various other types of material in the mantle, and obviously in the outer mantle. And depending on if the meteorite hits and excavates the surface of an object that has life on it, such as, you know, the Earth, will determine if that meteorite will have some remnants of organic molecules on it, still left over from the initial impact area. In other words, it all depends on how much damage this does to this object. will determine what kind of meteorite is formed. As well, this is the Earth. Mercury, on the other hand, has already had its surface and thick layers excavated to where the core is the majority of the object. So imagine all this outer layer has been ripped away. The core will be very, very dominant in mercury. So if an impactor hits it, there's much higher chance that it will form iron and nickel meteorites or asteroids or comets. And what this all means is that to form a meteorite, all it is is the shrapnel from an earlier destructive event from a previously existing object. Meteorites don't form in outer space because there's nothing to heat the object and there's nothing to keep it pressurized to where it can form the Thompson structures. Uh, the Thompson structures are those crystalline patterns that require very, very, very high pressures in very long periods of time they cannot be reproduced in laboratory environments it takes something as big and as hot as a star to form those kinds of things as well it takes very large objects to smash and destroy them to rip them apart to where they then can orbit the sun continuously or get ejected out of the solar system to land into the atmosphere of a completely different uh planet-type object, which exists in another solar system completely. 
So, two things. They don't want to cover the formation of meteorites because it conflicts with what they believe to be true about solar system formation. And the second thing is, there's not a wall separating the solar system from other star systems. So, if there's an impact from another, sol from another star system entirely, the shrapnel from that star system will willingly enter into our solar system. And depending on whether or not it, it hits something inside of our system will determine uh, where it hits. There, there's nothing on solar system formation in there. It, it's completely irrelevant. Meaning the meteorites that we find could have came from some other part of, in some other area of the galaxy entirely. They're not the remains of the solar system forming, which is a very, uh, shall I say, false philosophy that's been kept around since the 1800s. But now we know better. And hopefully people can understand that determining what material is the object is comprised of can determine directly where that material was in the host object before the impact event happened. Meaning, if you find pure iron nickel meteorites, you're finding pieces of an ancient star older than the Earth. And of course, the Earth is older than Jupiter, and Jupiter is older than the Sun itself. So you're picking up pieces of stellar remnant that's vastly older than four and a half billion years. But since they have everything all being force-fitted into four and a half billion years via the assumed initial conditions of the material, basically, they're off on their own little tangent and they have no idea what they're doing at all. The meteorites that enter in our atmosphere are probably many tens of billions of years old. Of course, that also conflicts with the Big Bang creationism ideal where the entire universe, all of existence, is 13.7 billion years old. So naturally, if you have a meteorite entering into the atmosphere of the Earth, it's actually around 6 trillion years old. It's, it's never going to get published. It's going to be rejected out of hand because the peer review system has the paradigm that the entire universe just popped into existence from something the size of a cantaloupe. Alright, take it easy everybody. Oh yeah, today is uh, December 24th, 2015.